In this video, uh, I'm going to show you an example of working on assignments uh, using uh, the class dev box that you should have installed before you watch this video um, to, to start learning how to work on the assignments um, using your VS Code server in your class dev box. So um, yeah, before watching this video, you need to have your class dev box installed and set up. So you so either watch the previous video or use or uh, from attending one of our help sessions or things like that. So you need to know how to cleanly stop and start your dev box um, from the command line using uh, Vagrant Up and Vagrant Halt. You need to know how to get into your uh, VS Code server in your dev box once it's running by going to the forwarded port um, in a browser um, from your the, the host machine of your dev box. Um, and um, you need to know how to be able to access shared files in order to get files in and out of your dev box. Um, we'll, we'll kind of have some examples and reminders of all of these in this video, I believe. So. Um, you also need to have completed configuration of your class dev box, but for the um, operating systems course, uh, the only additional kind of configuration was to make certain that you had the um, extension installed for the C, C++ IntelliSense tools. So I'll remind you of that again. Um, but let me go ahead and get my class dev box up, kind of to remind you of, of some of these uh, first steps here. So I've, so I've already got the dev box installed on this machine. Um, so normally, I mean, you need to, to um, start and stop your dev boxes from a terminal. Don't use the, the virtual box GUI to, to manage your dev boxes or else you'll have problems with shared folders and other things, okay? So um, in, order to enter, in order to start and stop your um, dev box, you need to be in the correct directory. So if you followed the instructions that I gave, um, you'll have a directory called repos from your home directory. Um, and then from inside of repos will be the um, uh, dev box repository directory that you need to be in before you can issue the vagrant command. So in this case, if we're working on our CSCI 430 class, uh, we need to be in this directory um, here. So from your home directory, whatever it is, it'll be different depending on what operating system you have. You have to go to the, the location where you cloned your directory, right? And then you use vagrant up to start up your dev box, okay? So if I didn't mention it before in the previous video or the help sessions, uh, a couple things to watch for when this is starting up. So, so you do want to, to ensure that your your port for your Visual Studio Code server is being forwarded. So that should be port 8080. You should see that being forwarded here. Um, another thing near the end, um, um, so that your Visual Co Studio Code server isn't gonna be up until you get back your prompt here on the command line, so it's still booting up here, although it should usually only take about 10 seconds or so, 15 seconds maybe. But one of the last things you'll see is that it sets up the, um, what's it called, the synchronized, the, the shared folders. Um, so this tells you that on your guest, the, the dev box, that the, the file called sync in the home directory is being um, synchronized or shared with your with the host machine, with this directory, okay? So when I talk about some making submissions for this class, uh, you'll see how you have to use um, the shared folder in order to, to get your submission file and, and then to upload that to MyLeo online. So. All right, so, so my, my, uh, dev, my, my VS Code server should be running now. So again, to remind you, that means that if I open up a browser on my host system, and I go to 127.0.0.1, which is the home, you know, which is which is the, the home IP address, colon 8080, so that's for port 880. That should access the VS Code server that's being forwarded from the dev box to that port there. You know, and if you don't see your code server there, then something's wrong. It's not running, didn't get installed, or whatever. All right. Um, So again, to remind you of this last point, if you missed it on my previous video, you know, do ensure if you go down, th this is your extensions over here. Um, um, maybe I'll talk about some more of these 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 things. This is for your debugger. This is for revision source control. So forget um, a, a general search function um, and kind of your file explorer, your file browser here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, if you don't have, it, it should probably be 1.4.0 or higher if you're watching this video of the C, C++ IntelliSense um, extension. If you don't have that, um, again, you should go over here and install it from VSIX, and I should have the .VSIX file downloaded for you to install. So, so make certain you do have that installed and running. All right. 
With that, we're ready to begin working on assignments. I guess you have to escape if you have that file dialog up there. So, so working on class assignments. So the very first thing to know is if you want to work on an assignment, you have to open up the correct folder to work from it, okay? So the way you open up a folder um, is from the file, explode, file explorer. So you see, so if you don't have anything currently open, you can just use open folder, right? Or this, this is actually kind of like your top file menu, but since it's in a web browser, it's over here on additional sidebar thing. So you, from from the the menu, you can go to file. Um, there's a there's an open folder. You don't really want to work, use workspaces. That's that's a slightly different concept. Um, um, so so you want to just work directly with folders. Okay, so open folder. So either way. Oops, so we'll open folder here. So if, if you have one of these sidebars open, um, you know, you'll see the, the things in it. So there's that, there's the search, there's the source control. And if, if you want to, though, you can hide it by clicking on it again, and that hides it, right? So that, that's useful to get more screen real estate space for you. So, I, so if you want to work on assignment, you want to do open folder. All the assignments are going to be in the sync directory so so there'll be no I'm sorry um, yeah so in the sync directory so that's that's where I'm at right now um, I, 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 I'm not certain I think it when, when you reopen that file dialog it goes to the last place that you had open so normally if you've never done this before when you open folder um, well I'm not certain so, so anyway so you have to navigate to find that so, so so you have to go to sync and that's where all your files are going to be. Um, for your repository, including the, the 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 folders that have all your the files for the assignment. So if you want want to work on assignment one, you need to go to your sync, go to assignment, um, and then go to assignment one, and then that's the folder that you want to open. Okay, so don't you know don't open up the assignment directory. You know that will. Um, I mean, you can do that, uh, but you won't be able to build and run stuff. You know, and don't open it up from the very top, like sync or from your home directory. So you need to open up the actual assignment that you want to work on. Like, and I'm going to use, I'm going to get you started on assignment one in this video here, right? So once you have that selected, say okay, and you'll see that now on your file browser. So this is my file browser. I've actually got now an actual list of files in file browser. So these are all the files in my assignment one. I've got a sim files, which is a subdirectory which, with a bunch of files under it, and then you've got all the files, your source code files, so there's a sim file and a test file, um, and then there's these two hypothetical machine simulator files, a header file, HPP files are header files, and CPP are the source files, or the, uh, I like to call those the implementation files. Those, those contain the, the code that actually implements your assignment. So, um, so that, that's where you want to be at. So that, that's the correct place um, to work on assignment. Of course, if you wanted to work on assignment two, you'd need to open up the assignment two folder and so on, right? So um, let me talk a little bit about the build system here first and then give you the general way that you uh, build and test um, your um, assignments, basically. So... Um, there's a build system set up for you that, that's plugged into the Visual Studio Code here. So you can run the, the build system by hand. So we're using a, a tool called Make, which is um, it's an older tool. Uh, there, there's other more recent, newer, shinier tools for making build systems, right? But, but Make, Make is, is still used a lot. It's not great um, for really big projects. So if you were doing a really big serious project, you'd probably use something other than Make. But for small projects like this, or smaller, maybe even medium size, um, it, it still works well. Although it's a little bit crufty, it has some things that you might run up against uh, doing stuff for this class. So um, um, you can open up a terminal in your VS Code Studio. Now this terminal is running on your on your dev box instead of running um, in um, on the host machine. So, so this is actually running on the Linux virtual machine, my development box, this this terminal. And since I have the assignment one open, when I open up a terminal with this in my explorer, that it'll make that my current working directory. Okay. 
Um, so I'm actually in my assignment one directory um, here, which, which is what you need in order to, to run the make commands if you want to do them against, you know, if, if you want to use the, the build system against the your assignment one here, you need to be in that directory to do stuff here. So, um, so the way make works is you do, you type make, um, if you want to do this as a command line, so this is doing the stuff by hand. There, there's some hooks, so you don't have to do all this stuff by hand always, but, but you can do it all by hand to, to build um, your assignment and to run the tests and to do other stuff here. So, so to use make, you, you say make is the command and then you give a target, a target name, okay? So there is a target that's built in here called help which will actually list all the valid targets here, which um, I think we can see all of them here. So these are all the valid targets that you can um, invoke uh, for each of your assignments, okay? So I probably won't talk about all these today. We'll learn about some of these. Um, the, the main ones that you need to know to get started on the assignments is you can do a make clean to, to get the build system back to a clean initial state so you can build everything from scratch um, and then you can do a make all or just a make so, so all is the default target right so if you if you do say make with nothing else which I'll show you um, it will actually run make all which will by default generate or build everything right uh, and then finally you can do a make test which will uh, sorry make tests there's a test and a test hopefully that won't confuse you make tests will actually run all of the system and unit tests, all right? So let, let's show, so if you do make clean, uh, so really all, all the, the make build system is doing is it's invoking other, these are actually command line um, commands. So if you know that this is a, a Linux system, so all this is really doing is running some remove commands, which removes files in order to make the, the, the build clean. So it really removes all these object files, .o files, which are products of the build and other stuff. All right, so that's all make clean does. Um, let me make this a little bit smaller so I don't get it hidden by my, my typing out there. Um, so then, I mean, I usually don't, I don't do clean every time. Um, so, so only if something significant has happened would I maybe go back to a clean state. Or if, if I'm having some sort of a problem, I want to make certain that everything's clean and, and I want to rebuild from start or from scratch, right? So, but, but uh, general, a after that, um, you want to do a make or a make all. So like I said, if you say make um, and, and say nothing else, by default, it'll do a make all, which builds everything, right? So the, the assignments that I give you um, for this class, they should all build and run the tests as I give them to you originally. So if they don't, if you have an error, uh, a, a compile error or a link error, when you try to do a make or a make all, you should let me know. Of, you know and, and you should always try and, and make certain that everything cleanly builds before you start working on the assignment. You know, so, so it should build. So um, all we're doing here um, is, is we're, we're linking together individual files into what are known as object files, or sorry, we're compiling into fi individual files into object files. And then those um, object files will get linked into executables, okay? There's two main executables that are built for the assignments for this class. An executable called test, which you can build using make test, and an executable called sim, uh, which you can build by saying make sim, okay? Test runs the unit test, and that's kind of going to be how you mostly work on assignments in this class. Uh, and then sim, though, runs a full simulation. Okay, so the ultimate goal of the assignments for this class is to simulate some part of an operating system. So like um, uh, a process manager or, um, or a file paging system is another simulator that we'll build or, or things like that. So that, that's what the different assignments are for this class in here. So you know, so, so these things where the, the, the result was a .o file, the, the last thing is the result here. Those were just compiling an object file, and then here it actually linked together a couple of object files to get the test file, which we use for testing. Uh, and then the final ones that linked together a couple, a, a few of the same object files um, um, to create the, the simulation, the overall simulation for um, assignment one. 
So for assignment one, we're simulating a hypothetical machine, which I'll talk a little bit about um, in, in our help sessions or in a, in a later video, okay? Um, because the purpose of this video is just to, to understand the basics of how you work on the assignments, not what the assignment one is about, okay? So with that, once you build it, so you might get a compile error here. Um, so one of these files might not build, which you should see an error message, or you might get a link error where it couldn't link something together, okay? But if you don't see any error messages or warning messages, then it, that means your compilation uh, succeeded, at which point you should be able to run the tests. So, so you can do a make tests to run the tests, all right? Um, so this just invokes the test executable. So for all the assignments, the test should run, but a lot of the tests will be failing. Most of the tests will be failing initially. So your job is going to be to write um, the, the assignment, to write code for the assignment in order to get all these tests passing. And then once you have all the tests passing, then you should be able to put the simulation together and actually simulate things, you know, the, 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 do the simulation of, of different pieces of an operating system in, in this case, all right? So I just kind of scroll all the way back up to the top. So the first failing test was happening on line 31 of our test file here, all right? So that, that's kind of doing it all by hand. And again, there's others. Um, I'll go over maybe a few others in this video, but not too many. Those are the basics for uh, working on the assignments. Uh, but you don't have to do these all by hand. So like I said, uh, there are hooks into Visual Studio Code for executing some of these. Um, using keyboard shortcuts, but all it's really doing is invoking the, um, the, the the make build system that's been set up for the assignments here. Okay, so let me just show you that. So, so for example, um, I'm going to go just close this uh, terminal. Then I don't need it anymore. So let's open up my test file. So the test file has all the unit tests. You'll be working a lot with these test files here, um, and I'll talk a little bit about these here in this getting in this um, example. Um, workflow for assignments video here. Um, but the keyboard shortcuts um, are uh, control shift one, control shift two, and control sh shift three, okay? So control shift one should do the make clean that I talked about, if, if everything's configured right. So since it's shift one, it's actually also control exclamation mark. So you see that that, that, that pops up a terminal of its own. So it's really just invoking the make clean um, uh, for you in a terminal, right? So whether you do it by hand or whether you just use the, the keyboard short by, shortcuts, you're, you're really doing the same thing here. So then control shift two, which is control at, uh, well, is, is bound to uh, the make all. So that should run make all. Um, after the, the first time you do this, the, the, the build should be relatively quick. The very first time I showed you doing that by hand, it actually had to link a couple things that only ever needs to link one time even for the other assignments, assignment two, right? It only other, unless you have to reinstall your dev box. So, so normally it should only take, you know, a, a two or three seconds to link, to, to link everything from a clean build for these simulations. Maybe, maybe five. Some of the bigger assignments have more files than this. So, so that was control shift two to make all, make all. And then control shift three will run the tests again. All right. So that's the basic for building stuff. Um, and, and again, w when you first open up the assignment, make certain that it, you can build everything cleanly um, and it runs the test. You know? So, so the, the test, sh many of them, most of them should be failing, but they should run, all right? right. Oh, and this is not an error message here. So, I mean, I know it can sometimes be, because it, basically what happened here is, is since there's some failing tests, um, it doesn't try and run the simulation. Uh, what I call the system tests. So, um, um, but but anyway, so, so I, I guess you just have to remember. I mean, this is normal to see this message about failed to launch um, uh, when you when you do the make tests here uh, from inside Visual Studio Code. So, all right. Okay, um, so uh, before I go on, uh, just maybe a little aside, uh, a little bit more about Visual Studio Code, doing some configuration, because um, uh, in particular, one thing I kind of want to set my themes here, but um, um, th there's a lot to learn about using Visual Studio Code uh, effectively. Um, 
And uh, you know, I would recommend maybe you know looking through the the documentation for Visual Studio Code, uh, that kind of stuff. So um, a lot of stuff can't be accessed through the menu. So there's a lot more things you can do than what you can get um, on the basic things that are provided on, on menu here, right? So uh, you can find some things by using the command palette. Um, so the command palette is Control Shift P, or you can get that from the um, the, the, the settings gear icon over here. So, for example, just as an example, I, I kind of find the, the mini map over on the right hand side annoying here. I, I, it doesn't really help me to use to, to see and scroll through stuff. I mean, if it's useful for you, of course, but I often like to turn that off. Um, so, like, if you hit Control Shift P, um, if you happen to know it's a mini map, you know, this is just a search through all the different kinds of commands that you can run and, and you can also see key bindings for commands um, if you didn't know it was called minimap um, it might be tough to find things sometimes so you might do some googling as well but yeah in this case um, I can kind of use the command palette to toggle the minimap on and off get rid of that that's one thing so but there, there's lots of um, of, um, of, 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 of things you can access uh, functionality on here um, if you're like me, maybe, um, um, there are a lot of kind of built-in default themes than the ones that are here, and I've gotten kind of used to using dark themes, uh, even though, um, I never thought I would, um, but, um, but, but yeah, you, you can, if you want to, you can, uh, pick a, a different theme, um, like, uh, for example, the, um, the, the dark the standard Visual Studio dark theme I think is a bit better for me than, than the light one um, and uh, what else oh yeah extensions um, so you already had to get the, that um, IntelliSense uh, installed although we had to install that by hand but um, um, most things I think should still work from the, 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 the built-in marketplace if you search for them. Um, again, this might be more useful if you need to get stuff installed, you know, to set up um, other build tools or, or formatting tools or things for different languages and stuff. So I've got most of that stuff set up already for C++ for our assignments. Um, but uh, just as an example, um, um, I, I'm still mostly an Emacs user, but, um, you know, I find using uh, Emacs key emulation useful for me so I can use my old me muscle memory for uh, editing files and things. So you, know, you, you just search for stuff and, and then if you find an extension you need, you can try it. It's pretty easy to try and, 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 and dump these if they don't work well for you. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but um, um, you might sometimes need to reload just to ensure that um, um, so that kind of does a full reload of Visual Studio Code, uh, the, this browser-based uh, version of it. Um, but, but yeah, often after I s install an extension, just to make certain that it's it's actually installed and running, I kind of do a reload. So so now I've got my 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 Emacs key bindings um, that I can use. Um, Oops, but yeah, one, one of the troubles with this is depending on your browser, sometimes key bindings are, 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 are bound to stuff that, um, um, by the browser uh, and they don't get passed through to here. That can be a particular problem, right? So usually what I do is I just disable the key binding uh, if I want to use it in here for my browser. In particular, I, I think some, I think Firefox uses Control Shift P for a key binding, so, so you might have to find out a way to disable that, that kind of thing. So, oh, but, but back to the extensions, yeah. So if you install something, you can just delete it um, or disable it to keep it around, but but um, but uh, not have it uh, being used. So. And if it says reload required, you should probably do a reload. Um, so now that I've disabled it, um, I shouldn't have my my Emacs um, key bindings anymore. So, all right. So yeah, there's a lot more on that, but but uh, I particularly wanted to get my my theme set. So. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit more about the assignments and the workflow. Um, so I've already mentioned that um, um, that. Uh, 
basically uh, each assignment you're um, going to be creating some sort of a simulation that's simulating some aspect of an operating system. Um, and we are also mentioned that um, um, every one of these assignments has two executables that it ends up creating, so a test executable and a sim executable. So you're mo mostly going to be trying to um, implement in order to pass um, all the, these tests that I give you um, initially, right? Then once you get that done, um, um, you will uh, maybe have to do some extra work then to get the full simulation working, to put, to put stuff together, okay? So for example, for assignment one, um, th th there's various ways that you can read the descriptions for the assignments. Um, uh, the, the full description is in the README of README file for each assignment, uh, or sorry, in, in the assignment 01 markdown file um, for each assignment. Um, so you can either read that or read the PDF. Um, so one way to read the markdown, so, so markdown um, is a useful tool, uh, but this is kind of raw markdown, so um, um, it uses a, a markup uh, symbols to indicate, you know, like like bolding and sections and, and creating tables and stuff like that. But you know, it's, I, I guess it's readable enough to, to read the documentation, the, the the assignment description using the markdown. Uh, but you can render the markdown. So if you like, um, I think if you right click, um, I mean, there's different ways to access this. If you right click on the the tab for the markdown, um, there's an open preview or yeah, there's a key binding for Control Shift V. So that will open up um, kind of the, 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 the rendered. Um, another thing, I mean, um, um, Visual Studio Code is a pane editor, so you know I can drag the tab over here to split it up into two panes, right? Um, and like I said, I mean, mostly that the, the, you can split this main editing area up into multiple panes, and then there's kind of a side and a bottom pane um, that are by default, you know, holding um, these side things, um, information, access, and, and the bottom one for the terminal and the problem uh, information kinds of things. So, but yeah, I often just keep up my, the, the preview here. So you can, you can, the, unfortunately there's no, there's no viewer for PDF that I know of. Um, at least I've tried searching the marketplace once. I don't know, maybe, maybe there is one nowadays. Uh, but again, these files are shared with your, um, main system. So, um, if, um, if you open up, you know, a file browser and, and you go to your um, um, repository on your host system and you look in your assignments, um, you know, the, the PDF should be there. So if you have a PDF viewer on your host system, you should be able to um, open that up and, and view the PDF that way. So that's another way if, if you prefer to have your PDF while you're reading the description for the assignments, um, uh, open up um, in, in your browser here, okay? So, um, so for assignment zero one, for these assignments, I usually break it down into a set of tasks. So the first thing you need to do for assignment one is implement the initialized memory function. Um, so you can pass these tests by simply initializing the member variables with the parameters given to this function. All right, so let, let's look at that. Um, maybe, um, actually I think I'll use the PDF, so I'll go and close the mark down here. So, so notice that we're calling, it, it, I've got the, the test file open, we're calling initialize memory, and then after we call initialize memory, we check um, um, that uh, if we call an accessor method for our simulation, like a get memory base address that it returns 300 because the first parameter for initialized memory is supposed to be the base address and the second parameter is supposed to be the bounds address. All right. So, um, and as I've already showed you, if you run the test, control shift three, um, the tests will run, but um, they will um, fail and um, they should be failing if you scroll all the way back up to the top and look at the first failing test, the first failing test is the one on 31. So the very first test in this assignment might not always be the very first test that's failing, um, but, but here, you know, so what this is saying is that when we called get memory base address, uh, uh, it returned zero, but we were expected to return 300 because we just initialized it with 300, okay? So your general workflow is um, um, 
I give you the task. So you should only work at one task at a time, and don't try and skip ahead to later tasks. So you should first complete uh, implementing initialized memory before you move on to step two, because often the, the, the this step needs reuses the work that you're supposed to have finished um, in, in a previous step. So, so you can't get very far doing step two or task two until you've got task one completed and all the tests passing for for step one here. Okay. Um, so, where was I? And, and um, always keep your code in a compilable state and, and so it can run the tests, okay? So maybe I'll introduce a bug here that caused a compilation error um, to, to, to show you what I mean. But, but always practice incremental development. Um, by that, I mean only add one small change, like, like one or two lines of code at most, and then try and recompile um, and see if it compiles or not. And if it compiles, then run your tests and see if the same tests are still passing or if you've gotten some new tests that aren't passing anymore, right? So, so always be checking those things in small steps, all right? And if any small change you make breaks things, you know, go back. You know, try, try and keep it small enough so you can remember, so you can remove or fix the last thing you did, so you can get it back to compiling and running the tests. So, so that's my general um, uh, um, advice for how you should approach the assignments, right? That's an example of incremental development. And we're using what's known as, as, as unit tests here. So this is also an example of a kind of test-driven development, okay? Although in this case, I've written the test for you. You just need to write the code to pass the test, okay? So let, let's, um, like I said, I'll give you a few of these. Um, and, and, and maybe another video, I'll go into more detail about, we, about what you're supposed to be actually doing for the hypothetical machine controller. But uh, in this case, um, I'll open up the header file. So here, the hypothetical machine controller is, it consists of mostly just one big class with a bunch of member variables, including like the memory base address and the memory bounds address. These are the things that are supposed to be being initialized by, by initialized memory and also the memory size. The size of the memory is just the difference between the end and the begin, or the, the bounds and the base address. All right. So in this case, the, the, the memory size is supposed to be 700. But you can infer that from the the, the the base and the bound address. Okay, so these these are member variables. So we ought to be able to just initialize these member variables um, in the initialize memory um, member function. Okay, so initialize memory is just a um, member function of our hypothetical machine simulator. All right, and that the, the actual implementation of all these functions should be in the .cpp file. Uh, um, of our thing. So I'll do a, like a search um, instead of scrolling around trying to search, trying to find it. Uh, oh, so search is like control F, I think. Uh, yeah. So um, let's look for initialize memory. So that's actually calling initialize memory. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller there. Um, and there's, there's the function. Um, all right, so this, this is the place for the task one where you were supposed to be adding code. So I, and I've got a little bit of meta comments here. So yeah, I mean, the very first thing you need to be doing is doing things like session, setting the base address, okay? So uh, here, the, there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, an issue because I called the name of the parameter memory base address. So, so the name that we pass in is memory base address, but that's the same as the name of the, um, the, the member variable, right? So uh, that's a bit of an issue. Uh, but if you know anything about C++, um, I mean, there's very, you could, if you want to, you could rename this to like um, um, the memory base address or a memory base address or something like that. So just give it a different name in order to disambiguate. Uh, another way you can do it is you can use the this pointer. So if you say this uh, memory base address, um, but by having this, uh, the, the C++ plus plus compiler knows that you must mean the member variable and not the parameter here, right? Since they have the same name, so I can I can assign the member variable in in this object to be the same to, to be whatever value we passed into the parameter uh, memory base address. So notice if you got your IntelliSense um, thing set up, um, uh, it'll It'll suggest stuff with pop-ups, um, and, and, and I'll show an error here as well. So 
and some other things. Okay, um, and let's introduce an error here so we can further check out the IntelliSense. So if I if I if I misspell memory bounds address, memory bound address. Like that, um, then um, you know. Notice, so, so we get the indication from the C++ IntelliSense uh, extension, um, and we get some information about this. Uh, so there's no member called that, um, and there's no, and, and this identifier is undefined, right? So notice, you know, it, it knows that this must be a member variable because we're referring it to it from this instance, right? But there's no member variable with that name, right? Um, and like this um, memory size equals the, 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 the bounds address minus the base address. It should be the difference of those two. So like that. All right. So if you didn't notice the squiggles, if you try and build, uh, so now we, we've, so, so your general flow then, so I added maybe more than I should have. Maybe I should just I added one line and then tried to compile and run. Uh, but yeah, here, if we try to compile, control shift two to, to, to compile, um, 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 it will also get a, co a compilation error, okay? So you should, um, um, again, if you have your IntelliSense set up correctly, uh, you should get your problems listed up here. So these will um, be clickable. So these will take you to the place where you're having the error. So here, I mean, they're all going to the same line. Um, tell me that, that, that memory bound uh, has no memory, memory bond address, and so on, right? So then we can, um, we can fix our error here. All right. So uh, did I still misspell that? Uh, memory bound address. Control shift two to, to rebuild. Yeah, so stuff that misspelled here. So let me just retype it. Memory bounds address. There we go. And that should compile there. So I finally got it. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the IntelliSense to. Um, re kind of um, uh, parse your file here so the squiggles might not go away right away uh, but yes yeah, now it's been so let, let's check our test again so we built um, and then we'll do control shift uh, three um, to run the tests and so now when we look at when we scroll the way back to the top and look at the first failing test the first failing test is all the way down at line 50 okay because i implemented um initializing the, the, the memory base address, the memory bounds address, the memory size. So it passes these. Um, and then if I reset, um, you know, it's testing that on reset that, that, that the base and the bounds and the size get reset to zero. So they're all zero. And if I, if I initialize memory with a different base and bounds address, it's, it's testing those, you know, so, so all those passes. And now we're failing at this check here where it's supposed to throw an exception if you try and set um, a bounds address that's bigger than 1,000, so, for example. Okay, so that's the basics of it. Like I said, um, uh, we'll leave it to a later video to go into more details about what the, the actual stuff you're supposed to be doing for the hypothetical machine simulator. Um, so yeah, but but try and test increment of development, and that's the basics of these these unit tests. So these tell you exactly uh, whether you've implemented um, what is described in the assignment correctly or not by by the use of the unit tests. All right. Um, okay. So another important thing. So let's look at the submission process. All right. So um, what you need to do in order to, to submit things for the assignment is. Um, um, you know, so normally, if you're logged into our class, you know, um, however you normally submit assignments. So I think I usually go to activities assignments, um, and you should have, uh, you know, a way to go in there um, um, and um, submit files um, for your assignment here, and you can add comments and whatever. Uh, but in particular, you know, you want to add a file, 
for example. Now, uh, here though, I mean, so what you should be submitting is what we call a submission file um, or submission packet for each one of these assignments. So the way to do that um, from your Visual Studio Code, um, your dev box, sorry, um, is uh, again, we need to do this from a terminal. We don't have a, a keyboard shortcut, it is, but it is one of the make um, build tasks. So if you do terminal, new terminal, or control shift, back quote, I guess that is, uh, from your assignment, uh, so the, the, basically you need to run the make submit target and that will create the file that you need to submit, okay? So of course you don't want to do this until after you've completed your work on the assignment and you think you're ready to submit your work, right? But if you open up your terminal here in your dev box and we do a make submit, so this does some things, that this, this makes certain that the code uh, is formatted to the class coding standards and then it creates a tar gzip file, all right? So the result um, um, is this file named, in this case, assignment whatever, assignment one dash, or sorry, um, the name is, is um, there it is, so assignment one dot tar dot gz. So this is a tar and gzip file, and that's what you need to upload. Um, so again, I mean, this is in your dev box. So if I did a directory listing here, I'd see it, right? But, but you know, like, like we said previously, if, if you've got your files uh, being shared correctly, you should be able to navigate to your assignment one um, in your repository. And everything you're doing in your dev box, I mean, all those files are going to be there, including that I, I just did the make submit, and now I've got the assignment assignment1.tar.gz. Okay? So that's the file that you need to submit. And since that's on your host machine, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running this browser on my host machine, so I should be able to, um, 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 you know, like like drag and drop. However, you usually do that, or um, or you know, um, or, or click that to do an, uh, uh, explicitly go to a file browser and do an upload. So I want to go to my repos. It's a 430 assignment assignment one, um, and there's the assignment one. Um, uh, tar.gzip file right there, okay? So we can select that um, and edit um, and you can submit it that way. Okay? So that's all you need to do for submit. Um, although, you know, um, um, yeah, we don't have a keyboard shortcut for doing the make submit. I guess I guess I could add that. Control Shift 4, I, that might not be bound to anything. Um, Again, if you're interested in Visual Studio Code, it's not too tough to add these. But I'm not going to get into that. So, so um, you do you have to add you have to find the the key bindings file and add that. Um, but yeah, since we don't do that very often, um, you do just have to open up a terminal and do the make submit to, to get that made, and then just upload that file. Okay, so that's your that's that's submitting file. That's what you need to do. So for every assignment, you're going to do the make submit, and then upload that to my Leo Online for grading. Okay. Um, okay, so actually, uh, I already covered the assignment build targets. I should have moved that to the other slide here. Um, um, you've seen running the, the unit test from the command line, um, and um, you can run the um, system test from the command line as well. So make test is, is supposed to run all of them, but if you want to, you can run them individually. So, so the unit tests are the ones that you're going to be working most with. Those are the small ones in the assignment whatever dash test that CP, sorry, excuse me, CPP file. So if you do a make unit test, it'll just run those. Uh, if you want to run the system tests, um, you can um, run make systems. Th this runs the, the actual simulation on, tries to, to, to test out the whole simulation, okay? And again, we'll probably talk more about these later. But, uh, but yeah, if you get the assignment all working, um, um, it should run the system tests, and they should be all passing, basically, uh, once you get the assignment completed, okay? Okay. Um, so there's, the, 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 
I may make it a requirement um, that you maintain this assignment documentation. Um, I don't know if it's too important for this class, so I'll just go ahead and show it. Um, so, so these every function, member function, has this documentation that's formatted using a tool called Doc Oxygen that, that can create the documentation from this sorts of uh, function header documentation here. So um, again, if you need to, we can generate that documentation. Um, that's the make docs um, target. So that should generate the, the, the doc oxygen uh, documentation here. Um, so um, I have to check these. You shouldn't be getting so many warnings uh, from from the, the the just checked out file. But but anyway, what that does again that that creates uh, the documentation that um, it's a little bit tough to access it inside of the dev box. But if you scroll to your um, you know if you use a file browser and look on your host system, you'll see that when you do a make docs, it creates an HTML and LaTeX, LaTeX um, subdirectories now. Um, and if you want to, like for example, if you can go to HTML and um, like open up the, the index.html is like the starting of the, the documentation for the, um, the, the, the project assignment. So if you double click on that, you'll get your full documentation, including, um, you know, you can list all your class lists, make a, a list of all the classes you've got in the assignment, um, and then this pulls up the documentation for the hypothetical machine simulator class, for example, which is documenting the class and all the member functions of the class and all the attributes of the class. And, and, and then it pulls, you know, if you look at these, it's pulling this from that doc, from those comments above each function um, um, in the files there. So, 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 so we might need that. Uh, I just, I just want to show you how to do that. So. Um, oh, and, and then one kind of final thing here, I did kind of want to quickly show using the debugger. Okay. So, um, by default, so over here is a hook into the debugger. So it should be set up to launch. It should it should launch the sim file um, uh, for the debugger. And the sim file um, um, is the full simulation. Okay, and um, um, the the sim file. Um, there's another file. So the assignment one test has all the unit tests. There's another file called assignment one sim. If, if you open that one up, that actually has the main function um, for the simulations that we build here. Okay. Um, so anyway, if you run the debugger, it's actually going to be starting running from the main on the assignment one sim.cpp. Okay. So if you need to. Um, um, it may be a little bit hard to use the debugger, so so if you have to use the debugger, you might have to like remove or comment out the main stuff, um, and then just create your own um, create your own you know simulation object instance, and then call the function that you're trying to debug, right? So, so what I'm saying is you might have to actually specifically make a modification to the main function if you need to, to get into a full debugger, for example, one specific function like initialize main or something like that. So, so that, that's probably what I would do. So if I needed to debug initialize main, um, I would uh, uh, maybe leave it, this code in here, um, but then just add something like a call to... Uh, like maybe remove this where we're trying to run a full simulation and just call initialize uh, initialize memory um, on um, you know and, and pass it some values like like we did for the first test so like 300 for a base address 1000 for a bounds address okay um, and then we'll, we'll remove all the stuff to run the full simulation. Um, and you do have to know a little bit about command line arguments. So um, uh, we don't have an easy way to pass these in when you run it from the debugger. So um, instead of trying to parse these command line arguments, let, let, let's hard code these. Um, so, um, so let's say that, that we want to run with a max cycles of, of 20. Um, 
And we really don't need the sim file name because I commented out where we were using it. So we'll just comment that out. All right. And if you don't have exactly three command line arguments, um, it'll just run, uh, uh, give a usage message. So maybe we need to comment that out as well. So now I think about it, I don't really need the max cycles either because that needs to be passed into the run simulation. So, so really, yeah, just to simplify stuff, if you just removed everything from main and just put in the code that you wanted to debug, um, you could do that. Okay. So now I should be ready, although I need to rebuild. Remember to rebuild since I made some changes here. So, um, oops, if we do control shift two, um, control um, at, um, it should recompile the assignment one sim that I made changes to and then relink it into our sim, right? Um, now, like, for example, if I wanted to run the debugger then, like, I could set a breakpoint here so I could have it break here so I could step into my sim, my, my initialized memory function um, and, and try it out. So now let's try it. Um, so if we go back to the debug, hopefully we've got this set up here. Um, if we start the debugger, Um, oh yeah, by default it actually always stop, It always uh, sets like an explicit, implicit uh, breakpoint at the very first line of code before it starts executing. But that's fine. So 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 here we are at the beginning of Bane. So I can start up here. Are the the basic you know stepping through and stepping into functions and and things like that. So I can um, step over step over, uh, and then if I wanted to, I could step into my initialized memory. So notice over here, we got the, the normal things if you're, if you're used to using a debugger. So we've got the current list of our local variables. Um, um, so we've got the argz and the argv, which have been um, um, optimized out. Um, and we don't have any other, um, mem any other um, parameter variables or, or, or member variables. But when we step into here, we should be able to see some variables. So let's step in to um, F11 or step in. Um, so now we're actually stepping through initialized memory. So now you can see that these are the local variables, which are the names of the parameters. So this is my, my, my instance of my class object which should have all of its instance variables, so memory base address, memory bounce address, and then we've got the, the um, memory base address um, and memory bounce address here, which are the, the parameters to the function, which are different from the member variables inside of this instance here. Right? So when I step over um, this assignment, I should end up assigning the 300 from the parameter into the, the um, the, the member variable, member base address, right? Um, and um, for some reason, it stepped over and assigned both of those. Again, it maybe it has those optimized. So anyway, so we end up assigning both of those. All right, and then you can do, a, you know, con you can continue to the end. Um, so it'll, it'll finish running everything, right? If you have any output, you'll see the output um, on, on the terminal, I believe, when you're running the debugger. So, or maybe on the output. Um, all right, so I've probably gone uh, long enough. This, there's some additional information. Uh, all this information should be at the bottom of the readme for our class. Uh, all these links should be at the bottom of the readme for our DevBox um, um, repository for uh, this class here. So, you know, again, you know, if you want some more um, information about test-driven development uh, using using the, the, the Catch 2 framework, um, you know, there's, there's a link there, or, or a tutorial on, on Catch 2, using Make, um, here's a link for that, and so on, so I'll leave those up. Uh, but that's it for this video, I hope it wasn't too long, um, and I will see you guys in our next video for our class. So.